Oh shit, it's the Burge. Let's go ahead and get this fired up. Because <clears throat> I want to show off a cool thing. Is it going to work? Uh-huh. Get a little bit of motor noise here. Oh, yeah. What's up, girl? Thank you very much. So, we have, um, I'll go over the whole setup, but we have a stick poking up here. At the top of that is my accelerometer, magnetometer type thingamabob. Um, and, uh, Orbitron is currently, in theory, tracking the XW2F satellite. Obviously, there's no antenna hooked up or anything, but we're just proving it out here. So we'll spend a few minutes just watching this thing kind of zip around. It's really cool. Every few seconds, it turns a little bit. While we wait, ASMR beer crack. Always good. I didn't touch it. It's automatic. There we go. Yeah, welcome to the Maddie Zedcast. Starting out with a bang with some robot shit. Currently says it's around 220 degrees. I think it moves every 5 degrees. You can keep track at the bottom there. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, you notice it's... Uh, I mentioned this in Slack, but it's... Tomorrow is the vernal equinox, which means that uh, the day-night terminator, this line here, is almost perfectly vertical. Moving right along. It's kind of interesting to see when it decides to turn on the low passes versus the high passes. Yep. That is exactly why. So far it seems to work pretty well. Um, <clears throat> what it thinks is north is not anywhere close to north because we're inside here. Um, in the ham shack and I have some big Sony bookshelf speakers right here um, so basically it thinks that's the North Pole um, so it's really north relative to my speaker um, a couple feet away so it'll be a lot better once it's out in the clear so 260 should go in just a second yep Yeah, you can see up there, there's a little accelerometer board on the right, and then it's hooked up to what's called a differential I2C, because the bus that those wires work on is only, has a max uh, distance of just a few meters, um, 
but the differential I2C basically turns it into a balance signal that you can send over Cat5. And yeah, even just the metal content of my camera there throws it off a few degrees. It's chasing it right around. I started working on the box, on, on the controller box on Sunday at like 2 p.m. and just went for 10 hours, just went ham on it. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, first I got it powering up and then I got it to control the rotator manually and then I hooked up the position sensor and then uh, it was freaky as soon as I uh, hooked it up to the tracking program and configured it, it just spun like 200 degrees and started chasing whatever satellite I was clicked on. It was freaky. Hey look, it's exact nautical sunset in Denver. Two ninety nine going to three oh five. Yeah. I have it set to overshoot a couple of degrees. It it won't be that important once there's actually antennas hooked up. But it should end up spinning pretty close to the camera there at the end. You can see my janky network shelf in the background there. But I got a plan for that too. We may talk about that. Set to 308. Turn right about now. I'm actually going DIN rail for the networking stuff. Um, I don't have rack mount stuff for networks, but I have a bunch of small little boxes, little access points and stuff like that. So I'm going to put everything on a DIN rail and then run it off one power supply so I don't have to use that shitty power strip up there. Because all that is is a bunch of 12 volt adapters. Like that extension cord, the white cord is literally just going to more 12 volt adapters. It's stupid. doesn't need to correct as quickly now because it's down by the horizon so it's moving a little bit less less fast slower I could have said <laughs> been a long day had to go into the office today Face camera's doing that exposure thing. Hang on, let me fix that. That's pretty reasonable. <clears throat> I think that's all it's going to turn on this pass. But, uh... Take a look here, for example, the next bird. I just click on it. Get some motor noise here. And it's lined up for the next one. Just got to click on a satellite and it automatically tracks it. It's so cool. So anyways, I'm going to shut down the auto track so we can take a look at this gadget here. See what crazy shit I've built. I'll go ahead and leave it up on that.
So for the moment, I'll take the rotator and put it off to the side. Sure, that's off to the side. So, what do we have here? Woo. There it is in all its glory. Um, right now I have the, uh, yeah, it is. That's a, uh, WRT 54G running uh, open WRT that I use for 2.4 gig here in the house. Do I seem quiet? Huh, hang on. Hey, you're right. Let's see if that's a little better. You hear me better? Yeah, I think that's a few dB hotter. That'll help too. Okay. So now I'm loud as hell in my own headphones. So here's my rotator controller box that I've built up. It's in a uh, Amazon box, project box. Um, it has blue metal panels for the front and back that I uh, cut replacements out of cardboard for. <clears throat> and, uh, Holy shit, that's all, that's amazing. Giant WRT. 600 watts output. <laughs> so I built uh, cardboard panels for the front and the back of this thing so I could prototype and uh, add all the stuff and crap that I want. Um, the LCD is pretty awesome. It's just mounted on the front right now. That 4x20 that we've been using. And then uh, the guts inside there. I'll just go to this one for the moment. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, see, do I have a pointy stick? I got a nut driver. That works. So, um, this is the power transformer. So these rotators work on 24 volts AC, not DC. Um, so I specifically had to get a power source that could supply a decent amount of current. This is actually a transformer for HVAC system. So this is what would run um, like a whole office building's worth of thermostats. Um, so I found this on on uh, Amazon. Uh, it was really hard to track down, actually. Go manual focus here. Um, yeah. So that's the power transformer there. Um, I got scared as hell when I started building this because it's one of those things where back here, there's 120 volts on that switch. I've got like a IEC power socket in there. You can tell my mad prototype skills. Um, so yeah, I have a master kill switch for the AC back here just in case things uh, kind of go haywire. Um, that feeds into the power transformer, which then provides 24 volts to the terminals the rotator are hooked up to which right now i have three screws <laughs> that's my terminal strip um those are controlled those are wired up to the relay board here um i only have two relays set up but i'm going to need four in the end so i can go left or right and up or down um so these switch power to those back terminals um uh, on the back i've got um, this looks ugly as hell. Um, it actually is fine. Um, as long as I don't touch it when it's rotating, those are some large capacitors that you need. Uh, they're basically motor start capacitors um, that you need to spin this rotator in the proper direction. Um, so based on if you want to go left or right, um, one of the two terminals here, these two terminals are the hot terminals, and then that one on the left is the ground. But both those hot terminals need to be uh, powered when you spin. Um, depending on which one you power directly and which one you power through the capacitor is if it spins left or right. Um, so that's why we have the weird capacitor set up and the multiple relays and all that. 
Um, on top of that, I have just temporarily fixed. That's the other end of the differential I2C. Um, so, so that's where the data comes in from the position sensor. Goes down to the Arduino there. Um, so that's actually hooked to the rotator through a 50-foot Ethernet cable right now. Just to play an old Cat5 cable. Um, and then, uh, I think... We take a look here. I'll fix the exposure in a second. Sometimes I wish I just had like a uh, a robot arm that would follow wherever I wanted to go. Yeah, it's about as good as you can see the display right now. Um, but I just turn this knob. This is a rotary encoder. It thinks it's like 180 right now. Let's see here. It's spinning it down there on the ground. Nope, I don't worry about outdoor cable. Um, it's cheap enough to just get regular cable. Um, you can really hear that motor when my noise gate opens. Yeah, then it goes away. Um, so yeah, it's cheap enough to just run regular Cat5 runs. This is low voltage and low power. Um, so I'm not messed about it. Yeah, this rotary encoder is ancient. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we've been playing with. Uh, I went nuts on this on Saturday, or on uh, Sunday, and just decided to start building it. Um, it's really nice because I managed to get, if you look in the back, the USB of the Arduino, which is the serial port to the... Uh, to the computer for the computer control i managed to get the arduino mounted just right so that you can just plug straight into it um so that was nice everything's well not everything's bolted in nicely the uh, relay box is flopping around right now um but uh i'm gonna get everything bolted up nicely this week and we're moving right along folks um it's been uh it's been a lot of design and a lot of trying to figure out what the hell i want to do with this um I still have to actually cut the front panel for the display because you can tell I've mounted it on the front. Um, it was actually uh, one of the best $10 that I've spent at Micro Center. It was just a shit ton of standoffs. What's up, Cat5? Thanks for the sub. Yeah. I got to get a fancy subscription uh, animation there. So, we're doing rotator farts right now. So that's the control box. I'm going to go ahead and turn the AC off. Um, it's just powered by the computer right now. I'm going to fix that. Um, just play the bits one. Yeah, the bits thing is wired up. I have a minimum tip of 69 bits right now. I'll go ahead and play a freebie. I think I can do a test here. Grab your bits and tip him! Oh my god, dude, this is a ham radio stream. Tip him bits! Tip him bits! Tip him bits! Oh my god. The old bit tip! There you go. That's what you get when you tip me bits here on the Medi Zed cast. <laughs> Still fun to make that, but yeah, I got to get some subscription ones going on for sure. So, I'll take a look and see if there's any more satellites we can chase with this thing. Chase, I say. There's no antenna hooked up, so we can't actually play radio on them. Computer on fire is good, and that video was not me um, on the video. Um, it was all my voice acting, though. Um, my cat looked at me very strangely while I screamed, uh, grab your bits and tip him into a microphone at midnight. Yeah, I don't know anything about the emotes. I gotta get that figured out. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not har hardcore into the Twitch culture. I don't know how to set that shit up, but I guess I should explore, eh? I, I did figure out how to raid last week, so I'm proud of that one. <laughs> so, let me see who's on deck here. And not many good passes. 
Let's just track everything. Hell yeah. Cool. I didn't know I got like the right to add emotes and stuff, so I'll definitely check that out. Let me uh, pull the camera up a little bit. Yeah, I know the bench is a mess. I've been working, working hard on a project. And put the rotator back up on the desk here. This rotor is so old. And yeah, that's a piece of one by two lumber pretending to be an antenna. All right, let's see. What does it think it is right now? 250, that's about right. It can be an antenna. If I, like, soaked it with water, it would be. <laughs> well, that's a good satellite that's going to come over here. All right, I'm clicking around. You can't see what I'm doing here. So this is every ham satellite up there right now. Most of them you can't talk on. They're just like beacons. I'm trying to find something that'll do a nice nice overhead pass. Let's track Tianwang 1A. Yeah, you can absolutely manually rotate it. Um, would help if I turn the AC back on there. Alright, so it thinks it's at like 240. Yeah, it's close enough. Um, so we're going to take this, and then we go over to here, and we just click this. Currently this satellite, even though it's below the horizon down here, Thinks it's about 151 degrees, so it should rotate clockwise a little bit. Let's see if I can. My camera's not meant to look up. <laughs> All right, so I click this button. There we go. Precision is. Uh... Hang on. It's a little confused because the camera's too close and it's got some metal in it. Um, my antennas have about a 20 to 30 degree. Uh, it's called a beam width. Um, so I don't need to be too precise. It's bouncing all over. I might need to make that change in like 10 degree steps. Of course, it's going to be totally different up there in the wild um, when I... Uh, don't have a bunch of, of like magnets and shit around there um no i'm i'm doing elevation too um i will uh show hang on i'm pulling up a picture of uh what i'm working on outside this week come on slack do, do, do. hang on yeah, here we go. So this is what it looks like out my driveway right now. So this is the elevation rotator right here. Um, built a bracket to mount it sideways. Normally it would be up and down and spin the antenna, but here it's going to tilt. And then I have my two antennas that I'm going to be using mounted on a four foot dowel because you want something non-conductive here. Um, so yeah, it will do elevation and and uh, heading um when i'm all done um but right now i'm just testing the uh the bearing or the azimuth but yeah so that's what uh this is going to go basically on top of this rotator here um it'll be you know 22 feet up in the air or something like that uh, but this is what it'll look like up in the sky and then those will tilt up and down yeah 
So I'm very excited about that. And uh, that's how I mounted it to the mast. Normally this this orange thing is flipped around and it like clamps onto the tube vertically. I just flipped it around and whacked a couple of holes for the U-bolts in it and then just bolted everything up. I mean, these rotators are made out of cast metal. They're fucking indestructible. You can drive a truck over them, no problem. So it'll definitely hold. Um, this is ge generally the approach that people use to mount these horizontally. Um, but yeah, it's very unique among rotators because, as you notice, it can have a pull all the way through, which is what you want for this. The setup is actually really balanced. Um, there's not much weight for or after or anything like that. Um, so there's not much lateral load on the antenna mast. It just it just spins, and the center of gravity stays really close to the the center pole there. So got a few minutes till. Changwang 1A shows up. Let me track it a little bit. Yeah. This doesn't move until it's like 5 degrees off of the desired heading. Um, so that way it doesn't kind of constantly go back and forth super fast. So... Um, the storm was wild. Ooh, that shit was super crazy. Um, actually nothing broke. Um, I did have, uh, one antenna that I took down, my big long dipole, um, because it was just flapping around too much. Um, and I was worried that it was going to break the rope it's on. It's on, or it was on kind of an old run of 550 cord. Um, so I ran out there in the middle of the storm and pulled it down. Um, unfortunately when I pulled it down, it took the rope completely out of the tree. So, uh, Friday after things kind of thawed out a little bit, um, I went out there with the old slingshot and the spinning reel and, uh, shot the line back over the, back over the tree. got it back up there so it's happy once again um let's see what else oh an old shitty scanner antenna that i had up got kind of bent up but i was just waiting for it to die anyways um because it was like made of that really really thin tv tubing for like crappy tv antennas um so i wasn't at all surprised to see that bent up a little bit but i don't really really even use it that much um so just kind of whatever there. And this thing's about over the horizon. And I'll start tracking it a lot more quickly. But, uh, yeah, the storm was scary. That was some, some freaky, freaky stuff. I did not like that one bit. It's definitely not uh, taking away from my kind of thoughts of moving to California. I mean, they got earthquakes there, but I can just jump with very well-timed jumps and avoid earthquakes. You know what I mean? It's true. It's like that thing where we're, you know, like, you know, whenever you're in a falling elevator, um, you just have to jump at the exact right time. And you'll be fine when it hits. Let's track just this one. It's sad when they know my jokes. Scary stuff. So this is going to spin from about 130 degrees through zero. Yeah, it's all about the timing. It's like the corollary of, you know, it's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop at the end. It's the same concept. Like, if you're the master of timing, which if you've ever listened to me tell jokes, you know I am. Um, 
it's fine. It's no big deal. I don't even know what the satellite does, but it was the next decent pass. And take a look here. 130 degrees. Yeah. Still pretty dead on. It'll move a lot faster as we get uh, the closest approach, like when it's right about here. It goes by. And that's when the Doppler is zero. Yeah, exactly. You got it. I was really good when I was a kid at putting the code in uh, for Street Fighter 2 Turbo to make it go up to uh, 10 stars. Hey, Butcher. Good to see you, buddy. Surprised you're up this late. Had a little bit of wiggle there, so it went back and forth. Those of you just ju just joining us, we are watching our, uh, our, our new satellite tracker, Gizmo chase a satellite across the sky it is not happy with this environment here there's there's too much magnetism um probably from my personality i'm probably throwing it off a little bit but also the giant speakers next to me probably have something to do with it hey i'm full of jokes today i was at work like actually in the office and i got to punish everybody with really bad jokes um, it was super good. So I think, uh, I, th I think one of the managers wants to call HR on me for intervention. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll, I'll take the burns with the praise. So that's what, 108? Yeah, and this says 109. So we're moving right around. Yeah, these caps back here, they're only 24 volts, but I'm still uh, pretty careful about them. Obviously, the, like they'll be mounted inside the case once I'm finished with this thing. We're still in the prototype stage, but this thing feels really good now. It's nice and heavy. Like that transformer is, is quite heavy. And also, even when the uh, rotator is not not working, just uh, w like an old school power transformer like that in general is going to be just slightly warm. So it has a very nice kind of thing here. Yes, we actually did have an unconscious bias training program. Um, and then the other one we had recently was how to have difficult conversations, uh, which is basically how to talk to an asshole. Um, that was kind of interesting, um, you know, especially considering that I see it, f you know, from the other side most of the time. But... This thing seems pretty stable. Um, it does seem to reboot now and then um, when it kicks on. Um, and I think that's actually because of a noise spike on the uh, on the wire to the rotator. Because um, when you turn an AC motor on and off really quickly like that, it makes big old spikes that are basically like radio energy. Um, and I think it might be like blowing up the USB cable going into this. So I need to work on that a little bit. But uh thinks it's about 60 degrees right now. It's about right. Yeah, we've had a couple of weirdos drop in the uh, Twitch chat, but for the most part, you guys are great, and uh, we haven't had any problems. I do need to probably talk to uh, one or two of my hardcore gang and turn you all into mods, just in case anybody tries to show up and get salty. You can see my goofy uh, swing box up there that I uh, hooked up for cable TV on my computer, right? It's like that old, uh, God, it's, 
got to be like close to 20 years old now, that old ass onion article about the age of the multimedia computer is here. And they're like, for only $5,000, you can watch TV shows on your computer. Yeah, it's, it's like a cable card that sits on your LAN. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have too many people coming in here trying to drag me. Um, there's only so many people that are ever going to even click on a ham radio Twitch stream, let alone ones that want to kind of disrupt things. We're still tracking this little bird, 28 degrees. According to the sensor, it's dead on. Obviously, like where it's pointed right now, that's almost exactly due east. But again, that's because the speaker here is at like a bearing of about 60 degrees. Um, so, yeah. Do they still do cable cards? Like, is that still a thing with like, you know, digital and stuff like that? Um, excuse me, if, if we have a clear clear front mini fridge with anything on the stream it's got to be pbr tall boys there is no there is no alternative matter of fact oh god yeah bobby tell them about cable cards so yeah you can get pci or pci express cards that are cable tuners um PCMCIA. People can't memorize confusing industry acronyms. That's interesting, Cat5. I've, I've, I've always heard that there's like a bunch of resistance towards them getting you a cable card. I'll get a Takate. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go on Craigslist and I'm going to look for one of those um, wine cooler fridges or whatever because they have a, gla a, a glass front. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that's what Ninja's actually using. PCMCIA was the best. The old x -Jack modems and land cards and stuff like that. Dank. Alright, this thing's about over the horizon. Not like we can pick it up or anything, but uh, we'll go ahead and turn off tracking here. Yeah, what the hell does a PCMCIA cable card look like? Yeah, because that's like a big old fat... Speaking of which, I'm going to... I got a uh, bag of... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and power this off. Take a break from the rotator box. Power down so I don't electrocute myself here. Or even shock myself. Super pedantic note. You get shocked until the point you are dying. You are dying, and then you are electrocuted. Because electrocution is a portmanteau of electric execution. So if you get shocked and you don't die, you did not get electrocuted. So let me go ahead and take our little project, put it alongside, and we will move on to the next one. As you can imagine, everything's a huge mess right now. But yeah, there's the network rack. Um, there's a WRT54G on top. Below that is a Netgear 8-port gig switch. Below that is my router, which is a... Uh, uh, what is that? Oh, um, edge router. And then over here, that raw board there. Um, that is a uh, old-ass Microteak uh, ancient 333 megahertz chip. Um, not super useful, but it's my 5.8 access point. And then next to that, I have my uh, sling box. So, anyways, back to the radio. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sad. All the analog TV tech is dead. Um, well, it's not dead. Um, as and it, as a matter of fact, I think we may see kind of a vintagey resurgence in. We'll just say like NTSC. Oh yeah, I got all kinds of transitions going on. I've been I've been working on my video. Wait till we go to break here in a few minutes, but yeah. 
Yeah, I uh, definitely legally and legitimately acquired a copy of the Adobe Creative Suite. Um, so I've been teaching myself uh, After Effects, Premiere, Media Encoder, and all that stuff. Um, and it's nice to have Photoshop again. So, been trying to get things set up. I need to finish a couple new videos, a couple new little video clips and stuff like that. And I want you to render me some logo stuff in Blender. I'll get to, like, source files. Yeah. I get a bit of a discount on that for the Creative Suite. Let's just, uh, let's just leave it at that. It involved disconnecting my computer from the internet. <laughs> so. Yeah, what other entertaining stuff did we come in here? I do need to make up some network cables. Or not network, but some RF cables. Um, if you've ever uh, seen a TV cable connector an RG6 compression connector and I got a bag of 50 of them so I'm fine with with like wacky renders though the crazier it is the better on here uh, exposure really need a hotkey to bring up the screen here much more vibey Hot chocolate high impedance. Yes, I love it. Fortunately, these connectors are not even crimp connectors. We're going to, uh, after the break, I need to make up some uh, RG6 cables, which is 75 ohm, like TV, like coax. And then I also need to make some 50 ohm, like ham radio connectors. Um, and I have um, some PL259s. And we're going to uh, get some hot solder going on with those because those are solder connectors. I'm going to show you how those connectors are installed. Um, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I can imagine that you see some terrible termination jobs there. Or not even terrible, just difficult. Put a nice new tip on my soldering iron shiny and good because uh, you can compare after a couple weeks of use the new one and then here's the old one it's just completely chewed up so do a little cable termination here in a bit maybe turn the radio up see if there's any old geezers on yeah I definitely need to get a camera upgrade, at least for my overhead. Let's see if there's any fun stuff on 40 meters right now. Just a bunch of switching power supplies. Oh, that's really cool. I'd like to visit there sometimes. Bletchby Park and, um, uh, what's the one out in California? If Atomic Thumbs was, was here, he'd tell me. KFS, the big old uh, shore to ship uh, station. KFH, I think. And then uh, one thing that's coming up that I'm actually super excited about is um, in late September, early October, uh, WWV, the time station, is going to be celebrating its 100th anniversary. Um, and uh, a local club has secured a uh, special event call sign to operate ham radio from the WWV site. Um, their call sign will be WW0WWV, 
Um, and the event starts on September 28th of this year, which, as it happens, will be my 40th birthday. And I'm going to hit that club up and ask pretty please if I can come operate the station for a little bit on my birthday. And if they say yes, you had better believe that we'll be doing a live Zedcast from up there. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Yeah, I think I I I think it'd be just super fun, just super exciting. Um, I've always loved WWV. One of the first like short-lived experiences that I ever had was my dad, like in the like late '80s. Um, we didn't have computers or anything back then, not really. Um, he's blasting in. Um, so he would set his watch once a week on Sunday nights. He would tune in WWV and set his watch to it. Um, so that was like one of the first kind of formative experiences of when I was a little kid and like what radio can do. Yeah, dude, that would be a perfect occasion for you to drag that stuff out and get it set up. Absolutely. That'd be super fun. So I'll keep everybody posted with that. And I need to hit up uh, that particular club and ask them pretty, pretty, pretty please can I come up and operate for a few hours? Because I, I would be so excited and happy about that. There's somebody in there that was super loud. Yeah, this dude's got a directional antenna, so we can. He's he's kind of pointed at us, but we can't hear the other dudes. Let's see who this is. Actually. Good enough for now. Harden the dust on my radio. It's not from lack of use, that's for sure. This thing does not ever get turned off. Oh, yeah. South American gang. They have some loud-ass transmitters. I can often hear Spanish on here and not hear anybody else. Hotel, Hotel, Quebec, uh, VA7JSF, any copy? A couple of nets going on. Can't hear most of the check-ins, though. This is kind of the season where shortwave starts to suck. HF isn't nearly as good because uh, the prevalence of thunderstorms. Um, the uh, interference and static crashes from lightning will go thousands of miles, and it's super frustrating. Which is a big reason why I've been working to get the, uh, wow, well, get a little strobe going on there. That's why I've been working to build the satellite setup, uh, so aggressively. Um, because the satellites work 365 days a year. Yeah, lightning is very whack. It's my least favorite thing in the sky. Fortunately, we don't have much here, so, like, risk of my shit getting hit by lightning strikes is very low it's true it really is true if I want to say that um, if we had no thunderstorms on the whole planet for like 90 seconds or some ridiculously short period like that um, the ionosphere would go away forever or not forever but it would be in serious danger Really strange how that works. This is it about five minutes? Makes sense. Yeah, the constant discharge of lightning into the atmosphere 
keeps the ionosphere charged and keeps uh, keeps the ions flowing. Some people playing digital on here. That sounds pretty good to me. Oh, I tell you what, this is a good transition point. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take my five minutes a little early because I forgot to. Uh, hit the little hams room before I started. Um, so uh, I'm gonna break for five, and uh, we're gonna come back, and then we're gonna uh, see if we can talk to some people on uh, 40 meter digital. Um, so uh, hang tight on the Zedcast, and I will be right back. All right, continuing right along. So let me go ahead and go over to this one here. Welcome back to the Maddie Zedcast. Let's play. See if we can rouse somebody on 40 meter digital. Let's fire up. Lol, if you click links, just lol. Type everything. 
So what I'd like to do here is just do a quick tune up. Drink it up. Drink it up, bitch. It's the best. <laughs> I was in a meeting today and somebody commented because I switched o uh, o um, over to uh, our Slack. And uh, somebody was like, ooh, that's some cool green on black. And then I showed them the actual board. And uh, they were like, holy shit, Matty Z is some sort of hacker or something. And I was like, yeah, more or less. <laughs> Good times. So let's do a little bit of tune up here. Make sure our our levels look good. Nice. And then some somebody made some crack about uh, buying drugs on the dark web. And I was like, dude, this is like two decades before that. We didn't have those sorts of luxuries. So, I'm going to do a little tune-up here, and fire it out, see if anybody's out there that wants to chit-chat with us. Yeah, right, literally everybody in the meeting was either Denver or SF, so, yeah. Who needs to buy drugs on the dark web when you just go out on the street? Amber is easier, however, when I was growing up for about four or five years, the only computer that I had was a uh, IBM XT with a Amber monitor. Um, so I've, I've done my time with that. Yes, I showed them the little switch back and forth, and they were even more amazed. There's one dude out there. Let's see if anybody else is screwing around. I might switch to my other antenna too, while taking care not to burn my hand on the soldering iron. Because that would be an, an, a very abrupt end to the stream, as I just cussed and... yeah. See, I've thought about getting my uh, Apple IIGS running and just, y y like strapping a Raspberry Pi or something to the serial port and then using it as a SSH terminal. I think that would be pretty fun. So, anyways, I'm going to tune my antenna here because I switched and I need to use the antenna tuner. That was awkward. Um, so, let's see. If I can get things things tweaked a little bit here there we go. it's pretty decent awesome I'm so scared of CRTs. I mean, I'm scared of tubes in general, um, but I'm absolutely petrified by CRTs. Was it 10, 15,000 volts? Not my idea of a good time, let me tell you that. And yeah, the whole enough charge to zap you good. Mm-hmm. I'll tweak that tune a little bit better. I got a, uh, Capacitor discharging thing set up. It's a uh, it's a uh, one meg resistor on a heavy in, like heavy insulated wire with an alligator clip on the end that I can strap to ground and then I can touch a cap and hopefully discharge it without too many too many fireworks.
listen to the Deedles. Oh, we'll watch that in a second. Hang on. I'm all about watching wacky YouTubes. Oh yeah, it's so good. Ugh. I'm kind of horrified at my YouTube recommendations here. Some of them are good. Oh yeah, this one's good. He starts out with that. Beat up old micrometer. And super fast forward. He does a whole bunch of work. Ends up looking like that. Beautiful little piece. I love watching the old tool restoration videos. Oh wow. Custom brass plate. Amazing. So good. Anyways, <sighs> my grandma used to tell me um, when she was younger, which is like 40s, 50s, 60s, so on, um, the face of the CRTs was separate of the kind of the housing behind it. It like it wasn't just one big. Uh, one big glass tube. It was a two-part thing that had some sort of glue or something. And uh, people would uh, take old dead TVs and uh, pull the front glass off. And then make it like a little window frame type thingy or something like that. Seemed kind of cool. But back then, like, the glass was not nearly as strong. Um, so it was much thicker. So you got this neat little lens effect. So you could like put it in a frame and then put like a piece of art or something behind it and I guess it looked really cool. Um, so shit long, long by. I think I, yeah, I, I remember you saying something about that. Um, I can totally see because aren't those tubes like submerged in water or something like that? So the shockwave of one imploding is going to be enough to blow the others yeah terrifying fans kind of dead I heard a couple people a uh, couple people uh, bashing away earlier but nothing right now we don't want to talk to those people they're boring Wow, that's pretty amazing. That's a switching power supply, but I can also hear somebody talking. It's interesting because American hams cannot talk below 7.1 megahertz, um, but Canadians can. So often Canadians will hang out at like 7090 or 7095 um, because Americans can't contact them. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good tactic. So. Alright. Well, seems like the bands are kind of dead, so, uh... What are we gonna go for? I'm gonna go down and hang out. Let's see if we can hang out with my old boys. Maybe if we're lucky... A little short wave down on six megs. Venezuela.
Venezuelan Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jorge Arriaza, there you go. The Let's get some news from Radio Havana, Cuba. It's coming in very well. Have been forcibly seized by Washington -backed While we do that, I'm going to get my soldering iron heated up here, and we're going to solder a couple of connectors here in a minute. Buildings have been seized, said Arriaza in an official statement adding that according to the 1961 convention, quote, Venezuela's diplomatic assets in the U.S. can only be used by the official personnel that represent the democratic and constitutional government of President Nicolas Maduro. Representatives of the Venezuelan... He's using the helping hands. ...claimed interim president, Juan Guaido, took control of two buildings belonging to Venezuela's defense ministry in Washington and one consular building in New York, said Guaido's envoy, Carlos Vecchio with the blessing of the U.S. government. This latest attack on Venezuela's sovereignty comes as a blatant disregard of international law. According to Article 22 of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, the I'm going to laugh if I get VOD muted on this for uh, communist propaganda. How sweet would that be? And wear that shit as a badger pride. ...of the head of the mission and is under a special duty to protect the diplomatic mission against any intrusion or... They're really useful. I try to remember to use it every time I can. I need to get a slightly different style one for uh, working on circuit boards, but this one's good enough to work on a lot of things. So I've got a nice chunk of... Uh, this is called LMR240 Ultraflex Cable. This is coax cable that hams use. It's high quality, know, about a dollar a foot, somewhere around there. And, uh, look at right there. Let me come up on my exposure a little bit here. While detailed information has yet to be released, flight That's tracking better. data shows both flights on the Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft seem to go through... Yeah, thank you for reminding me. After they took off. Both flights killed all crew and passengers on board after the plane crashed minutes after takeoff. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal has reported that the Transportation Department is launching investigations into regular approval of the Boeing 737. I bought some cheap connectors off Amazon, and they were so cheap and so garbage that I drove down to Ham Radio Outlet yesterday. In the two fatal crashes. <coughs> bought some good ones. Builders of U.S. military planes and has multi-billion dollar contracts with the Fed. Kind of do a little comparison here. So these are the cheap ones that I bought here. Um, they're just shitty nickel plated, not very well made. And then these are name brand Amphenol Field 259 connectors. Um, big difference. These are way better. They're silver plated all around. So you can solder them well. They're going to last forever. And I was a dumbass. Because, like, these are only three bucks a piece. Um, and then these were a buck fifty. I tried to save money and I got burned. Don't buy cheap connectors off of Amazon is the, uh, is the moral of the story. So, um, one thing about these is that these are designed for what's called 405 cable, which is 0 .405 inches in diameter. Um, if you'll notice, it's not nearly, uh, big enough cable to go in there. But we have these things called reducers. And how, how you do these, you see how these all solder up in a bit. That screws in the back, and then this is a perfect fit in there. Um, and that's how you put these on different sizes of coax cable. So, to get started out, all I need are wire strippers and my trusty pocket knife. I haven't bought anything from McMaster in forever. That's a really good idea, though. I should check out and see if they have anything good. Pull out just a little bit there. So what we do at this point is we find a spot that's right around even with the uh, with the bottom edge of those flanges there. And that's where we're going to strip the outside off. And that's why we have a knife. And a delicate hand. We've done this so many hundreds of times in our life. 
you kind of know how to do it. You don't want to like nick the copper braid in there or anything. It's easier to go back through a couple times. Some people use a box cutter for this, but that's too sharp. In meetings with heads of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Minrex on Monday, Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canel. Starting to see a little braid through there. I think I can just pull this off now. There we go. Beautiful. So this is really good quality. It's like tin braid and everything like that. So before we proceed, there are two things we need to do because these have to be assembled in order. You put got to put the other the outer shell on, and you have to put the reducer on. And I've soldered up so many connectors without doing one or both of those. Alright. Do they have toilets on there? That'd be awesome. Cool, so the next step of this is we take this braid and kind of undo it a little bit. And we fold it back over that reducer, which goes right up to where we strip that outer, outer jacket off. Kind of twist it around. Ends up looking rough, roughly like that for now. So, the next step is go about an eighth of an inch, or about three millimeters up for the Canadians. And take the wire cutters and strip this off. Amongst international solidarity, doesn't take much. and world peace. And once again, our headlines for today. Diaz Canel says Cuban doctors can never be discredited. Construction sector key to Cuban economy. Venezuela yeah, denounces there. unlawful seizure of diplomatic premises in the United States. The Association of Pedagogues of Cuba in session. So at this point, this coax is built a little bit differently from most ham coax. Um, if you see, there's just a little bit of foil around that center insulation, and that's going to short out the connector. So I just take my knife and kind of strip that down. The Spanish edition of the New York Times has just released a repugnant article suggesting that the Bolivarian Revolution in Venezuela uses the widely available Cuban medical services in that country. Ooh, they're salty, aren't they? Control over I'm mad as hell about population. that. Use votes for Maduro in exchange for medical supplies and maintain other measures of social pressure. This repugnant lie is signed by the New York Times correspondent in yeah, we'll Venezuela, get this up close. Nicholas Casey. Proclaimed as the Times correspondent in Caracas, although his license as foreign envoy has been cancelled because of a series of press reports. It's kind of hard to spin coax through th all 360 degrees. You need to put things on properly because it's all coiled up and it's a lot stiffer than you'd expect. Even though I specifically bought the, the more flexible version because the center conductor is stranded here. I've got some other stuff that's solid conductor in the center, and it's cheaper, but it's not nearly as flexy. And this is going to be the cable that goes on my satellite antennas, um, so it needs to withstand repeated flexing. Yeah. Stranded is the good shit. It's also literally twice the price. LMR240 is about 50 cents a foot. This was 90 cents a foot. Um, so after that, I look real close and make sure that no strands are kind of shorting out there. Make sure that braid's folded back all the way. And then we also have to make sure that the center is dead on and not bent because it's got to route through that center pin as we screw things on. And the widespread kind of, of the hundreds of thousands of peel things out there we go in the four corners of the world and then we very carefully you got to hold it very steady from that reducer 
thousands upon thousands of Cuban doctors Screw on. and other specialists. I shot over by a couple of millimeters here. That's not a big deal. To their patients Cut that off to where it's flush. Send tiny metal chips everywhere that will go into my socks later. Um, <clears throat> let me tweak focus on this and kind of show you. Where Western type doctors would not touch even with a 10 foot pole. I know personally of the gratitude of the mothers, fathers, and other relatives of the tens of thousands of children. So the braid is now accessible through those four holes in the side. It's kind of hard to see, but I definitely see it's in there. And in many cases, all three so we are ready to start soldering up. In no case, the Cuban Sometimes I like to just take my pliers and hold on to that reducer and just a little turn, make sure it's in there good. Oh yeah, if, if this was solid center, I would not have nearly been aggressive with it. Um, like that LMR 400, that thick stuff. That's actually solid center. Um, and it's aluminum wire that's copper clad. Um, and it's very important to be extremely careful with that to not, like, on that final step where I'm cut, um, um, trying to st strip off that center insulation, um, you have to be very, very careful not to nick the copper on that. Because when you have a coax cable or any wire carrying RF, um, let me fix focus back. Um, the RF actually only travels on the very outside of the wire. It's called the skin effect. Um, so if you nick that copper, you're now forcing the RF to go through aluminum, which is not nearly as good at copper as a, as a copper at transmitting RF. Um, so I'm very, very careful. I usually cut it like 80% of the way and then just kind of twist and pull and it breaks the rest of it. But that way I guarantee that I don't uh, accidentally nick, nick that center conductor. Doesn't matter nearly as much with this because uh, it's solid copper. Man, they're getting excited. Alright. I have identified for you, my dear listeners, some of the criminals who are behind the wave of U.S. violence in the hemisphere with the aid of some right-wing... Wet my little sponge on the brake. They all have their hands stained... I think I'm running too hot, actually. Of ...thousands of innocent people. I now respectfully ask you, dear friends, to draw your own conclusions. And this friend has been Radio Havana Cuba's editorial comment for today. All right, first thing we're going to do is get that center conductor going. Hang on. Get a good stable angle. Thank you, ADP. Shooting from the hip as usual. Now, Elena Valverde conveys the opinion of Cuban and international medical authorities on the highly professional reputation. This tip's not quite broken. Cuban Health Minister Jose Angel Portal showed on Monday that no revolutionary Cuban doctor denies his her patients the treatment they need. Oh no, my solder stuck to it. His her patients lives. You can get a new not a new iron. In a message this thing's kind of... There we go. That looks much better. Cool. So we let that cool for a little bit, because we're about to apply a whole shitload of heat to this connector. Yeah, it didn't tin up really well, and it's weird, because I put a brand new tip on this last night. In another tweet, the top Cuban health official recalled... I think what I'll do actually, because I just happen to have a pack of files here. More than 140,000 Cuban collaborators have offered their services in that South American nation, treating millions of patients and training more than 24,000 Venezuelan health professionals. Also on Twitter, Cuban Minister of I might have let this sit too long untinned and it got some oxide on the tip there. Noted that the social missions Barrio Adentro 1 and 2 
have brought health care to millions of Venezuelans in an altruistic manner, which is a main characteristic of Cuban health missions abroad. Both Cuban officials were responding to an article published by the New Not ideal, Times, but better. I bought cheap tips. That was my fault. Cuba, All right, so our center conductor is locked down nicely. And dignity of Cuban health professionals who travel around the globe saving lives. And then we just go in and we need to heat this connector up pretty good. So I'm going to crank my iron heat a little bit here. And institutions alike. The article in question maliciously asserts that Cuban Grab doctors working in the medical care to the people for the governing socialist party in the May 20, 2018 election that saw Nicolas Oh, God, I love that so much. All right. The New York Times reporter, Nicholas Casey, said his article is based on the testimony of 16 Cuban health professionals who defected from their medical mission in Venezuela, although only two such names are actually mentioned in the article. It's worth noting also that no evidence is provided. It's hard to tell because focus, but that was a nice clean fill. And we just take it and rotate it 90 degrees and do all four. Cuban health professionals working in Venezuela to exercise control. Over the population. I made it myself. That's actually me doing all the yelling. I took that and did a bunch of voice acting overnight. Life-threatening ailment. The third person mentioned in the New York Times article who contributed his testimony is none other than Jose Miguel Vivanco, director of the America's program at Human Rights Watch. According to the New York Times, he said, and I quote, the Cuban government wants to make sure the Venezuela regime survives. And you can kind of tell, to do it's hard to see on cam, but you can kind of tell when uh, when the solder gets oops, actually sucked down into the braid and makes a good electrical connection. Spin and do the next one. Vivanco was a close collaborator of the Chilean secret police during the Pinochet dictatorship and of notorious terrorists of Cuban origin like Hubert Matos and Sixto Reinaldo Acuit, who founded the support group of self-confessed terrorist Luis Posada Carriles. The lies spread by the New York Times, these two Cuban defectors and these anti-Cuban extremists contrast sharply with the experience of millions of people on all five continents who have benefited from the expertise and altruism of Cuban trained health professionals whose training are not limited to That's just the best three. healthcare practice but who are also widely recognized and the last one I'll go ahead and high human and solidarity spin it back. Cuba's international support in the health sector is neither new nor was it started in Venezuela. Rather, there is an easier way to do this. Cat5 knows what's up with the crimper. You can get crimp connectors for this cable that only require that you solder the center pin and then you just crimp uh, the connector onto the shield. I'm starting to like those more and more um, every day. Hang on, this is a little loose. Which had just liberated from French colonial rule. Kind of thinking of investing in the crimp years, setup, e even though I can do this pretty well. Health collaboration has seen more than 400,000 of its health professionals provide services in a total of 164 countries. Their mission in every nice. one of those countries has never been done. to interfere in their internal affairs, but save lives contribute to and building yeah. sustainable health care systems and improve all four look to be nicely filled out I would trust this with my precious radio signals made of the 256 Cuban collaborators who risking their own lives fought the Ebola virus in West oh yeah these don't come off these are one-time use super solid and then you just take the, uh, the outer shell Screw it on. 
boom, that is one fully assembled PL259, high quality. This will soon be on top of my roof. Yay! So that's how you solder a PL259 connector. I've been doing that since I was like 11 years old. Sometimes I use an iron, sometimes I use a small torch. Like those little dab torches. These are really good for doing coax connectors. You get it now, what, with the solder type 259s? Oof. About Cuba's health cooperation with other peoples and nations of the world. Cuba provides so much international cooperation. <laughs> yeah, it's not a creme brulee torch. It's not a micro torch. It's a dab torch. People know what that is more, you know, more than anything. So what I'd like to do now is for those of you that. Uh, are not Burge, um, that don't know what it looks like to put TV coax connectors on. We'll show the relative simplicity of uh, what it's like to install. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to uh, install some RG6 connectors here. So uh, I've got just a random scrap of RG6 quad shield here. This is uh, the most common type of TV coax. And for this I just need my wire strippers and a RG6 compression tool. That's my switchblade. And then grab a couple of these compression connectors and these are way way easier than put on. Um, including Jamaica. We are extremely grateful for Cuba. So I don't even really need to measure these too closely. You can just ballpark. You want to cut off about a quarter inch, maybe three or not quarter, um, three eighths of an inch, maybe a half inch here of you cut all the way to the center conductor here. Um, so we're going to just uh, take my wire strippers and try to get things centered. And we just cut through everything. Just pull it all off. And it's totally normal to have some kind of extra bullshit strands there. That's fine. Take uh, a pair of scissors. And then get all the kind of stray strands out there. And then just cut them off like that. More things that will go into my foot at midnight when I'm drunk. Thank you, later. Now the music on the half hour is by Irena Garcia and it's called... And then the second step, you see here, after it's just down to the bare wire there, is we got to cut the, just the outer jacket, the outer PVC jacket, back about a quarter of an inch or so, with that same three eighths. This stuff comes off pretty easily. Murphy's Whiskers. Hey, Kovach, good to see you. I don't think I cut through quite deep enough. I also need to resharpen my knife here. Because I've been installing a lot of coax connectors. As well as cutting cardboard. That's the real thing that killed it. definitely not hire me to be a cable installer so that's what it looks like now and then we just take these strands that are now nice even lengths and we fold them back making sure to get all of them some nice tunes going on there cool so then we're ready to install it and we just take our connector Slip it right over. And push it back. Just until that center insulation there is even with the, the connector. You can back it off a millimeter or two if you went too far, but you don't want to push it too, too far. 
There we go. All right. Yeah. Don't, yeah, don't worry about trying to spread the foil back. So this has different presets for different types of connectors. Um, and how it works is you squeeze and it pushes that down and forces things together. Um, so this is currently set to, to uh, crimp these F connectors. You can also do BNCs or even RCAs with this. Um, haven't found a use case, but believe me, I desperately want to find one. So you just take it and you get the center conductor in the hole there. And then there's a little collar that it backs up against here. And then you just take it, and all you do, squeeze, until it doesn't go any further. And that's what it looks like installed. Hmm. Safe and secure. Cut off any extra. That one's good, because these are actually copper clad steel center conductors. So that'll feel really good going into my foot later. <clears throat> so yeah, that's how you do cable TV, satellite, whatever connectors. It's on there, it's never coming off. Um, super easy. And uh, yeah. So I made a whole bunch of new patch cables. I'll spin the camera around. On my uh, little ca cable TV distribution block there, the bottom wire uh, comes in from the left, from the TV antenna, it goes to a preamp, then goes to a splitter up top there. And uh, one side goes to my sling box, and the other goes actually goes back outside all the way around the house, back in another window, and goes to my actual TV set. I probably need to optimize that flow a little bit. It still works great, and I still actually pick up more, more TV stations on my TV than I do on the sling box. I don't think the slings are particularly sensitive receivers. see if I have a place to dump this crap. How about an old do double quarter pounder box? Because I'm the cleanest dirt bag around. Awesome. Cool. So that's how we play coax connectors. Um, those are the two most used in the shack. There's also end connectors. Um, usually those are a nice clamp setup um, where you screw in the back of the connector and it locks things down pretty nicely. And that was seen those damos los manos by Irino Garcia. Arnie Coro is up next with his edition of DX is Unlimited. Oh, here we go. Arnie Coro. This is a guy that talks about shortwave and ham radio on Radio Havana, Cuba. Perfect timing. He's great. CQDX, CQDX, CQDX. This is Havana calling. CQDX, CQDX, CQDX. This is Radio Havana calling all shortwave listeners and radio amateurs. Welcome awesome. to... My favorite RF connectors. Dxers Unlimited, Radio Havana's weekly feature dedicated to the fascinating the APC world of radio communications. I wish I could have Hola, mis amigos, radio justification to yes, use these. In north and south of the equator. We are all now enjoying the typical equinoctial propagation conditions on the shortwave band, especially high Why is there only a 300 pixel wide? Anyways, these are RF connectors, and they are genderless. Um... They all have this threaded collar on them, so if you want a female connector, you just spin the collar back to where it exposes threads, and if you want a male connector, you spin the collar forwards to where it has the the uh, collar sticking out. Um, so all cables are both male and female, and that is the future because gender is a construct. The average daily solar flux barely changed from 70.6 to 70.9 negligible. Yeah, APC7s are super cool. Let's see. 
to 1969 on March 20 to 1070, and then March, on March 30, we'll have similar 69. Uh, looks like adapters start at $30. <laughs> I like BNC a whole lot. It's good up until a couple hundred watts, and it's good up to a few a, a few gigahertz. Um, it's just a little bit less secure physically. You know, if you have a BNC antenna like a rubber duck on a handheld or something, you do know there's a little bit of play and wiggle. So it's not really uh, as structurally minded as like a PL259 or something like that, um, but it's still completely suitable. And it's good for quick disconnects and stuff too. This is Ray Ramon Akio, the name of the program is DHS Unlimited, and it's on the air twice weekly. It is now at the request of our listeners. Information of our schedule. DHS Unlimited's weekend edition, the one that you are listening to right now, is on the air just after the top of the hour. Ray Ramon Akio, a newscast. The program, by the way, is on the air. Man, it's coming in strong tonight. Good propagation to Cuba. The midweek edition is on the air just after the half hour news. With a reruns program for Tuesday. I want a crate from Ant. Fucking Antarctica full of high voltage cables. Yeah. Oh no, that's horrible. Yeah, you gotta be careful with that stuff. Oh, so sad. So sad. Yeah, that's real bad. I'll show you a nice horrifying thing. Um, yeah. Oof, box of clay pigeons. Um, so this is the cable that is needed for my uh, Heathkit old school tube ham radios. Um, so the power supplies are separate on these. It's a separate box about the size of a bread box or whatever um, that uh, takes 120 volts in and then it squ uh, squ squirts out like 12 volts for the heater filaments. But the most important thing is that it has 650 volts on one of these pins. And this is what hams have been using for years and years um, to power these rigs. And this is all the connectors look like. It's basically a tube socket um, that you solder wires to. Um, and one of these has 650 volts at like uh, 150 milliamps on it. Um, absolutely will kill you dead if you touch it. Um, and this is okay. Just like, look at the multi-conductor wire. N no special considerations there. Make sure you don't have any solder whiskers. Yeah. Um, those radios are currently in my shed just cause they scare me so much. Um, probably this summer, um, I'm going to go ahead and clear off the stuff behind me and put an actual bench up there and start up like a vintage desk. Um, and I'll have my tube rigs back there. Um, but still, I pucker a little bit when I fire those things up, just in case I forgot something or there's a strand of wire between here and there. Because, um, you, you know, I, I've got 12 volts at 50 amps right here under the desk. It doesn't scare me. It's fine. It'll absolutely weld things together, um, but it doesn't kill you. Um, the high voltage stuff, it sketches me out so much. Amphenol. Oh yeah, good connectors right there. Classics. Yeah, they're still in business and they still make some of the best connectors out there. Um, hams swear by those silver-plated PL2, uh, PL259s to this day. Um, just nobody out there. The big thing about those 259s is not even necessarily the silver plating, um, but it is because... Let me pull out another one here. So we'll compare with one of these shit garbage connectors that I'm about to throw in the trash. Because I hate these things so much. Like, that's cheap metal. That's not cheap metal. But the most important thing is that on the cheap connector, that's just like a cheap phenolic insulator between the center and the shield. This is actual Teflon, and it doesn't melt when you solder the shit out of that center pin. Um, otherwise, these things will slag and stuff like that, go go sideways. Um, not good times. So really, the most important part 
is the fact that that center insulator is Teflon. But yeah, I, I just hate the sound of these because they just sound like cheap pot metal tin. It's basically what Tesla control arms are cast out of. The same metal that these are. <sighs> Sad. Engineering standards have just slacked over the years. I tell you what. Yeah, I know. That was an easy drag, but I mean, they make it so easy. Yeah. What the hell is up with those 737s? Like, I haven't kept up with that. I just noticed that, hey, there was a big problem. They grounded all the planes. Um, evidently, there was some sort of override or something. Um, so, some sort of nanny that the pilots weren't aware of. I don't know. Um, it sounds like there's a big failure of the whole, the standard very good um, avionics slash plane engineering you know usually they have a very established process everything's very well tested and all that um software bug that put them into a full speed nosedive that pilots couldn't retake control over i mean that was basically my breakup last year too right hey oh at least i can laugh at myself um that's really horrible though Hey, Amras, good question. Um, well, um, pretty much what you want to do is uh, study more on the things that you don't understand and uh, kind of uh, set the other stuff aside. Um, as far as the fundamentals, um, you know, you need to kind of understand that a radio station um, needs a ground. Um, people don't understand how important it is for there to be... Uh, grounding and uh sort of uh kind of the station setup needed for a good signal um your ground is the other half of your antenna basically um american licenses are uh tech in general and extra right now well yeah but see like out in space like everything around you is ground because there's nothing right there's zero volts <laughs> Actually, the satellites use their chassis as ground. Um, where's that picture? Okay, this has to be a troll or a question. Could I use a bucket of dirt to ground a small generator? And it's because I was looking for this picture <laughs> Look, they grounded the generator. <laughs> it's so classic. It's so good. <laughs> Portable ground. Um, yeah, um understand kind of the rules and the uh yeah i know that's the worst part is th is they could have just clamped that wire to the grating that it's sitting on and it would have been much better ground than that but uh i'm suspecting that somebody did this for a joke photo not sure but anyways um going back to the what to study for a tech question um it's good to get uh at least do a casual read through all of part 97 um, and kind of get what they're driving at with all the rules. Like, understand that you have to ID every 10 minutes and at the end of a conversation. Um, understand that it's illegal to interfere with another transmission. Um, stuff like that. So, like, Cat5 is definitely right on that. Um, find out, um, you know, like, all the different little... Uh, conditions of of uh, operation like you don't need to worry too much about like this is a a uh, auxiliary station under remote operator control and stuff like that i don't think there's too much of that on there thanks for the follow august augustine yes um so yeah um 
good to get the basics of the policies. What 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 is the ham radio service for? Thanks, Noah. Yeah, we're here Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, um, about nine or ten hours a week. Um, so just kind of understand that re- like the the actual amateur radio service as defined in Part ninety seven of the FCC regs is um, here. Fuck it. Let's pull it up. We won't go too deep in this. Don't worry. Let's just do the PDF. Basis and purpose. This is what it's all about. Um, the reasons that we do this as posted in, in the FCC regs are Recognition and enhancement of the value of the amateur service as a voluntary, non-commercial communication service, particularly with respect to providing emergency communications. Now, that last point, I will get into straight up knockdown bar fights over. Um, I would like for that to go away. I think that there's too much emphasis on you get a ham license because you want to provide emergency communications. Um, we are not your free... Uh, you know, no charge, like, backup disaster radio service. And people treat it as such. We can help. It doesn't mean that we have to help when there's, like, a natural disaster or something like that. Some people take it too far, and they put too much emphasis on that whole, hey, if you're a ham, you got to get ready to go out there when there's a hurricane or a snowstorm and, and, like, help the cops when their towers go down. First of all, police radio is way more reliable than ham radio these days because they have money. Um, after that thing happened back in September 2001, Department of Homeland Security funneled billions of dollars into uh, all sorts of law enforcement communication systems. The average cop radio system right now is a thousand times more reliable, has generator backup with a thousand gallons of diesel at every transmitter site, stuff like that. Um, so we're kind of edge case, like stuff like Hurricane uh, Hurricane Maria in in uh, in uh, Puerto Rico, that happens now and then, yes. And we did help out a little bit there, um, but just like keep in mind that it's not th- this emergency communication stuff is exactly as important as you want it to be. You don't have to get a safety vest and go out there and try to direct traffic. Um, and there's a lot of us in this chat that kind of just point and laugh at that stuff. Um, continuation and extension of the amateur's proven ability to contribute to the advancement of the radio art. This is a very important one for me. Um, we're hackers. We're playing around with the technology every day. You know, I figured out how to take Arduino and a couple old $20 TV rotators, and I'm going to track satellites with it. That's my kind of shit. You know, you can build transmitters out of Raspberry Pis now. You can, can, like, it is actually... Okay, slight tangent. Um, not really a tangent, but a rant. Um, a lot of older hams are like, I remember back in the good old days when you could go to a landfill and get an old TV set and pull tubes out of it and build a little Morse code transmitter out of it. Yes, so that used to be a thing, and it's obviously not anymore. But now we have microcontrollers. We have um, cheap transistors. The most important thing for like ham radio experimenters right now um, is the fact that we have a huge pipeline from China as far as parts and stuff go. Um, you can order, like, I ordered a bunch of obscure RF transistors from China. They showed up in seven calendar days. Not not business days. Calendar days. To get something from over there to here that quickly, that helps me build circuits and, like, explore ideas and do stuff like that. Um, shipping is cheaper than ever for all sorts of stuff. So it's actually never been a, t- a better time to be like an experimenter type ham. Um, you don't have to build your own shit. Um, yeah, see the U.S. Now, I haven't ordered anything in the past few months um, after Cheeto Perez kind of torpedoed everything and did, you know, the uh, sanctions and excise taxes and all this garbage. But there was a period of time where I could get stuff in a week or two. Um and actually, some of the Chinese distributors have uh, basically shadow warehouses here in the States to where you'll order from Shenzhen or whatever, um, but it'll ship from, like, in, in one example, I got stuff mailed to me from Boulder, which is 30 miles away. 
Yeah, I don't even know what you're doing building your particle accelerator, dark matter detector, crazy, yeah. If anybody, like, wants to blame the impending black hole um, that's going to swallow the Earth from within, um, Mr. Despair is absolutely one of the guilty parties. Um, so if that happens and we all blink out of existence, you know who to bitch about in the afterlife. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I'll let him fill up chat with uh, all the cool info, but uh, Mr. D has the coolest job out of any of us in this chat, for sure. Um, let's see. Um, the next goal is encouragement and improvement of the service through rules which provide for advancing skills. Um, so this is a little different from the B point, because this just says you can solder stuff up. Um, C means you can intelligently defend the uh, whole notion of homebrewing and building your own stuff like that. They don't want to turn it into a black box service where you just pick up one of those little bubble pack walkie talkies. Um, stuff like that. They want us to experiment. This is a holdover from like the last half of the 20th century where hams did an incredible amount of work as far as inventing new communications technologies and stuff like that. They basically gave us like a very wide berth to just experiment with shit on the hand bands. Um, there he is. He's posting the links. It's all over. Um, point D is pretty straightforward. Expansion of the existing reservoir within the service of trained operators, technicians, and experts. Um, it's a big goal of ours to educate. Obviously, you can tell that I like teaching just a little bit. Um, so... That's part of it. You can't hold it to yourself. You got to help other people that might be interested get into the hobby. Um, and then E is kind of uh, odd and strange um, if you're not familiar with it, but continuation and extension of the amateur's unique ability to enhance international goodwill. Um, so, with the exception of North Korea and I want to say one or two Central African nations, every country on earth has ham radio operators. Um, some of them just have a handful, like the small island nations here, you know, he, you know, here and there. Um, but we are all allowed by international treaty, um, as long as we don't talk politics or talk, you know, about like global war or any like serious heavy shit like that. Any ham on this earth is allowed to talk to any other ham on this earth. Um, and that's one big thing that they've really pushed and tried to keep a thing is that even during the height of the Cold War, American hams talked to Soviet hams all day long. Um, Soviet hams were um, basically prohibited from talking about in anything ideological or anything, you know, like uh, heavily political. American hams weren't banned from doing that, but it was strongly discouraged. Um, and... Uh, they let that go through the whole Cold War, and they let Soviets and Americans just ordinary Joe Blows and Ivan Blows. <laughs> I crack myself up. Um, talk to each other on the airwaves. Um, so that's another big thing too. Is like we're, you know, we're supposed to reach out and try to talk to people um, in other countries if possible, and uh, just kind of share the the shared excitement and all that. Um, of ham radio with people that uh, may have a different perspective on it. You know, somebody that lives on a tiny rock in the Caribbean and stuff like that. Um, they got a different perspective from like a Kansas farmer, but you're supposed to meet in the middle and just in, like enjoy the service and the hobby. Um, and that's, that's a very important part that a lot of people kind of ignore. Um, the body that regulates all this stuff um, is the International Amateur Radio Union. Um, this um, is, um, and actually, this is like the the non-official organization. This sets a bunch of policy. Um, the laws are set by the ITU. Um, oh yeah, I would I would love to get some islands on the air and get things going on. Um, absolutely love it, but. Yeah, the, the IARU sets policy and guidelines and gentlemen's agreements and stuff like that. The ITU is an international organization that all 
countries are are party to, uh, and they set laws. Um, these are the people that you will run afoul of. Say, if you launch a satellite in the sky, um, or say a cluster of ten thousand micro satellites that you want to, you know, try to execute some pipe dream idea of giving everybody. Um, low earth orbit internet access uh, there have been a couple of people that have tried that shit um yeah it's all it's it's all complaint based um well to to a certain extent um the fcc does keep an ear on things um but generally if you just like hop on and talk a little shit and nobody complains to the fcc or any of the other orgs um you're gonna get away with it but once somebody complains, they're going to open a case on you. They're going to start monitoring your transmissions and stuff like that. Um, and uh, kind of get you that way if it's long enough. Um, the FCC takes years to go. And the IARU and, and the ITU, um, they take even longer. Um, but they have very wide-sweeping changes um, that they can like kind of roll out. Um, so one of the reasons that... Um, you know, people say, like, we're going to lose the ham spectrum to, like, telephone companies that want to use shortwave to uh, move data and stuff like that. Telco characters. Um, stuff like that. Um, the ITU regulates international shortwave usage. And because it's in inherently a medium that doesn't stop at borders, they have the final say on things. So the U.S. could ban hams from using the shortwave bands sure fine but there's 370 other countries that are still using them and none of those telco company systems would work um how do those hillbillies that we have heard on the air get get away with it um there are a couple approaches um a couple of them are skilled in, in the legal system and they know how to uh, file continuations and um, stays and all sorts of stuff like that um, to basically stall out the FCC and just keep their license for another 10, 15 years. Um, some of the others um, get away with the fact that um, not that I'm bagging on the ACLU. I'm not. They're a very important organization. However, they do have a stake in this. So you'll hear cussing on the air. You'll hear racism, all sorts of stuff. Um, unfortunately, um, hopefully that generation goes away soon, but you do hear some offensive like speech on the air. If you look back at all the enforcement actions that the FCC actually takes against people that are basically trolls on the airwaves, they don't get them for indecency. They don't get them for obscenity. What they do is they listen very closely and they say, Oh, you didn't identify every 10 minutes and at the end of your transmission, like is in part 97. You didn't, um, you know, like intentional interference is the number one reason that, that those um, trolls have gotten busted before because they key up and they yell over somebody else. That is a clear cut violation that doesn't in, um, in like um, generate any sort of free speech discussion. So the FCC specifically shies away from any cases where the only violation is obscenity because if they were to chase somebody down and try to take away their ham license just for cussing on the air or just for saying that they want to lynch Obama or whatever, and there was a lot of that several years back, um, but they ID'd properly and followed every single other rule, the ACLU would, by necessity, come defend that ham in court. And if on the chance that they were successful and the ham did not get their license taken away, there would then be um, de facto rulings that say that it's okay to say that stuff on the air. And the FCC wants to keep that window open for any potential crackdowns. It's kind of like busted taillight laws. Most of the time, they're not going to actually get you for a busted taillight or say having your exhaust too loud, stuff like that is kind of secondary violations. But if they pull you over for armed robbery, they very well may bust you for having a three and a half inch knife when only three inches is legal. Um, and they want to keep that as an additional kind of stack on charge for when they do take somebody down. But the primary stuff is always either failure to ID on time 
or it's intentional interference. Those are what they actually bring up the um, NALs, they're called Notice of Apparent Liability. Um, but they also can make that higher if they have mitigating things or um, wrong way, exacerbating things like you were cussing on the air while you failed to ID. Um, so that's how they get away with it is they know how to toe the line and they know how the FCC works and they make sure to ID very studiously every 10 minutes or nine minutes and 58 seconds. And then when they're done and they shut the radio down, they also give their call sign. And if you don't break any other laws, the FCC is never going to hunt you down. Um, so it's a weird kind of state of affairs. Um, so that's how they get away with it. Long story short, aggravating, aggravating circumstances. Thank you. Yeah, it's very much trolls just knowing how to work the system. So hang on in there, wherever you are. In this wide world of ours. On this date, March the 19th, in 2000, I love this station so much. The U.S. led war of aggression against Iraq was launched under the direction of the calling it like it is. I love you, RHC. Forces, primarily from the United States and Britain, launched a massive attack on that country. The U.S. sent in more than 130,000 troops during the initial phase of the invasion with about 45,000 British and 2,000 Australian soldiers joining in. Cool. All right. I think I'm going to go for a little bit longer tonight. I've been running two-hour sessions lately, but uh, for anybody that wants to hang out, I'm going to take another uh, quick break, and I'm going to... Uh, okay, thank you for that. I'm going to uh, take five, and then I'll come back, and we'll have some actual audio coming back from Radio Havana, Cuba. I'll just play around a little bit, and if anybody has any further questions, we'll just do a little Q&A. Um, so stand by the Matty Zed cast. We'll be right back. Wow. That's freaky. My video clip froze. How about that? We'll be right back. All right, let's bring this back. Asset needs reloaded. Ugh, lame. Last December by Parliament as accurate and coherent. There you oh, go. Should, you should be able to hear that a little bit better. Based on a main element, how to produce more materials on a local scale and create conditions with a view to each municipality. Yeah, I figured out how to render stuff with Alpha. 
I have to render it to QuickTime with an alpha channel. Such a strategy will have a guaranteed impact on this program over the next 10 years. The most complex pretty cool. social problem in the country. The Cuban president I just don't want to blast y'all out. There we go. That should be pretty good. Efficiency and prioritized in investment projects, especially those related to renewable energy. The Cuban president also highlighted the need to reduce bureaucracy in order to speed up the construction process. Got a little bit of fading here. Venezuelan Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jorge Arriaza, reported that the country's diplomatic premises in the United States have been forcibly seized by Washington-backed agents. In a clear violation of That's the not good. Convention on Diplomatic Relations, our diplomatic buildings have been seized, said Arriaza in an official statement, adding that according to the 1961 convention, quote, Venezuela's diplomatic assets in the U.S., can only be used by the official personnel that represents One more shot the democratic ASMR for and the constitutional night. government of President Nicolas Maduro. Representatives Good stuff. of the Venezuelan lawmaker and self-proclaimed interim president, Juan Guaido, took control of two buildings belonging to Venezuela's defense ministry in Washington and one consular building in New York. Said Ooh, Guaido's envoy, seizing Carlos buildings? Bechir, That's not good. With the blessing of the U.S. government. This latest attack on Venezuela's sovereignty comes as a blatant disregard of international law. According to Article 22 of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, the premises yeah. of the mission shall be inviolable. The article continues... You're not the only one getting tingles off it. ...the state may not enter them except with the consent of the head of the mission and is under a special duty to protect the diplomatic... PBR has a very gangster price at my damage. corner bodega. Even 187. In diplomatic relations ...for a tall boy. By Article 45, Good stuff. ...the receiving nation must continue respecting foreign properties as the Venezuelan government has done with the U.S. Embassy in Caracas. Ariaza has asked the Donald Trump administration to, quote, take the necessary measures to immediately reverse this forcible occupation. He said that if the U.S. government continues to disregard international obligations, Venezuela's government... Yeah, I remember Tap in that new office. Y'all got a heck of a spread there. The Ethiopian transport minister said early investigations have revealed... See, yeah, CAF5, I feel it. That's why I go into work. Um, and crack ass, you're totally right. Um... While detailed information yeah, to be I love where I work, and uh, you gotta drag me into the office, even though there's unlimited beer snacks, everything. Yeah. Um, one of the perks is, um, let's take a look at the coffee maker, because we chit-chatted about this a bit in Slack earlier today. Um, as well as into the development of the aircraft. Faulty flight control software Where is that bad as a thing? possible culprit in the two fatal crashes. Yeah. Boeing is one of the major builders of U.S. military planes and has multi-billion dollar contracts with the Pentagon. This is the coffee machine that we have at work. Oh my god, get out of my face. Um, we have a Jura. And you just touch the screen and it makes a latte. Like, it grinds beans and everything for you. And it makes a really good cup of coffee, but it is $5,700. <laughs> Which is pretty ridiculous to me, but thinking about it, I mean, if 10 people a day make a $5 cup of coffee, it only takes three months to pay it off. Um, but I love this thing so much. I wish there was an app for it, so I wish I could tell it when I'm downstairs to start making my coffee, and it's there when I'm, you know, walk upstairs. Um, but I'll deal with having to wait there 30 seconds. On March the 11th, the Ecuadorian government formalized the decision to suspend its participation and withdraw from the constitutional treaty of UNASUR, thereby leaving the bloc, joining Colombian President Ivan Duque, who, on August the 27th, 2018, made a similar decision. Other nations Man, South America is rough right now. You got Bolsonaro fucking up uh, Brazil. He was on Fox News the other day. They're giving him a platform in this country on a major cable news network. He's going to clear cut that, that Amazon rainforest and just kill the environment. As President Pro Tempore of UNESCO, Bolivia is willing to offer the Palosor building in Cochabamba. Yeah, I can't believe that they're allowing him. I mean, the idealistic part of me says, oh my God, how is he getting a platform at all? Um, but the 
kind of pragmatic hell world side of me says, well, of course they're giving him a voice. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The pullout will take effect after six months from the date the notification was received. But he's going to just cut that rainforest down, as well as oppress like millions of marginalized people in Brazil. Um, Sad stuff. Fortunately, we have Radio Havana Cuba to tell us the real shit. I mean, they pull no punches. This is a very good. Um, an idea from President Ivan Duque, I don't want to say specifically anti-American. Um, it is techno like t technically a propaganda station, so you know there is that. Um, but they have really good news. It's kind of like RT or Al or, you know like uh, Al Jazeera, something like that. Just a different perspective. But in this messed up Overton window that we're in right now, anything that's not pro-American is anti-American propaganda, right? Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canel described the current international situation as an enormous challenge. This as part of a comprehensive analysis of the work of the organization during 2018. Yeah, Venezuela's got its problems, and they they haven't done thing to things totally right. I will totally agree. Um, however, like, in this case, like, given the history of American meddling, in Central and South America just over the past like 80 years um, I'm more likely to indict you know the Americans for, for pulling some serious bullshit um, it's just nasty and uh, you know they probably uh, you know I mean socialism isn't perfect it's not the perfect system or anything like that and uh, the past few years in Venezuela have been pretty rough um, but that doesn't mean that we get to go in and seize their oil and randomly blow up their refineries and this, that, and the other. Um, yeah. In this context, this organization has been able to add the talent of the most experienced officials to the formation of a generation of young diplomats with high sense and revolutionary commitment, noted Diaz Canel. He mentioned the legacy of Cuban foreign policy left by Fidel. Oh yeah, it's absolutely the, like. Doesn't Venezuela have the most oil reserves of any country right now? Like, screw the Middle East. Mi like, they're tapped out. They're drying up, and they're panicking because they have no other economy built up besides petroleum. Nothing. Construction sector key to Cuban economy. Venezuela denounces unlawful seizure of diplomatic premises in the United States. The Association of Pedagogues of Cuba in session. Wild, wild shit, man. And yeah, how are we supposed to keep up any sort of intelligent, like, begging the question that they even want some sort of intelligent oh, discussion and, you know, dialogue, as they always, like, claim to want? How can you defend like stealing Venezuelan diplomatic buildings in DC. The Spanish edition of the New York Times has just released a repugnant article suggesting I think we're on a replay here, but let's go through this one again. A little bit better levels. Widely available Cuban medical services in that country to exert control over the civilian population. Use votes for Maduro in exchange for medical supplies and maintain other measures of social pressure. This repugnant lie is signed by the New York Times correspondent in Venezuela, Nicholas Casey, proclaimed Call as him out by name. Nice. in Caracas, although his license as foreign envoy has been canceled because of a series of press reports in which he grossly distorted the economic and social reality in that South American nation. In other words, he lied. Yeah, that's that's kind of the hidden the truth. Is that um, Mr. Casey managed with the support of his Lima we're rocking colleagues, the classic Andrea PBR tall boys, with whom he shares many reactionary, backward points of view, Ugh. to author a report full of lies and distortion. I don't know how you can do IPAs. I mean, the world is already so and bitter. Expressing his admiration <laughs> for Juan Guaido. The self-proclaimed... You drink what you drink, and it's Venezuela. all good. It's all good. As is usual in this mudslinging <coughs> type of journalism, the article speaks about statements by some of 16 Cuban doctors who allegedly deserted from their... There's all sorts of good stuff to drink in Denver. Denver, like... One Canadian IPA? Well, Ecuador, yeah, that's fine, because, you know, like... 
a Canadian IPA is like, uh, you know, 12,000 international bitterness, uh, international bitterness units, but then you have the exchange rate, so it's only 9,500 down here. <laughs> yeah, I'm over in Lakewood. experience of the hundreds of thousands of patients who in the four corners of the world have received the care, attention, and humanitarian assistance. Of There's so many good beers around here. Um, we're obviously kind of stereotypically known as the weed city, um, but we're also the beer city, very much so. There are so many great breweries here, um, tons of just amazing amazing beers um you can like you can stay swerved in this town for a year straight and drink a different beer every night and uh they're all good i know personally of the gratitude of the mothers fathers and other no i'm not familiar with that one but i go out to golden on my bike a whole lot i'll have to check that out around the world and of those who recovered their health their eyesight and or their hope and in many cases, all three of them... Well, Grand Rapids is the Denver of the Upper Midwest. <laughs> oh, okay. I know where that is. Nice, nice. Yeah, when I, uh, when I ride my, my uh, little ninja out to uh, Golden, I always roll up 32nd Street, which goes right, uh, right th literally through the middle of the Coors Brewery. Like, there's this big tunnel Peru, where their, like, Brazil, plant is overhead Colombia, and you ride underneath and, it. Course, and I always, like, rev my bike up to, like, 11K up there because it sounds really good. Um, so, yeah, I gotta go check that out. ...of modern medical attention. It is... The extraordinary struggle inscribed you know, it's weird because I've heard about Grand Rapids more in the past month just on random topics and random things um, than I have in, like, the past, like, two years. Something's going on out there. I don't know what's up. But, like, we just hired a guy, actually, that's going to be on support, and he's in Grand Rapids. Um, so he'll be, like, under my Denver manager, but he's out there. Um, so it's kind of interesting. I don't know what's going on out there. expert. Unquote, I'm down with it, though. In their propaganda effort, the authors of a slanderous piece used as a witness an individual named... God, I love this fire. Vivanco, head of human rights yeah, you are, aren't you? That's American, right. I remember you mentioned said, that. Quote, the Cuban government wants to ensure the survival of the Venezuelan regime and is doing everything its power to support... Maduro. Yeah, I won't go to a high school but reunion, um, but uh, I won't begrudge you years. Um, actually, a couple years back, I passed my 20 year because um, I'm old as shit. Um, so uh, I don't think 30 year reunions are a thing. They're probably pretty sad. So. of dictator Pinochet's secret police. I have identified for you, my dear listeners. Some of the criminals who are behind the wave of U.S. violence in the hemisphere. Oh wow! Here come the, the docs. Of some right-wing administrations, they all have their hands stained with the blood of hundreds of thousands of innocent people. I now respectfully ask you, dear friends, to draw your own conclusions. And this, friends, has been Radio Havana Cuba's editorial comment for today in Havana. I am Alberto de Perez. Now that's an editorial right there. New York Times ain't got shit on that one. <laughs> Screw your op-eds. That was some fire. They are mad about South America right now. They are so mad. Now, Elena Valverde conveys the opinion of Cuban and international medical authorities on the highly professional reputation enjoyed by Cuban medical personnel stationed abroad. Cuban Health Minister Jose Angel Portal all right, I think we're on reruns right now. Revolutionary Cuban doctor denies Let's do a quick spin through. Treatment they need See if there's anything fun on the ham bands. For political and go down to 75 meters. There's some, there's some Morse code. Start at the top and go down. Oh, they finally legalized wreck out there? Okay. Romeo India calling Kilo Six. Echo Romeo India. Yeah, even Arkansas has legal weed now. But it's basically like uh 
if you're literally diagnosed terminal, you can get CBD oil, and that's about it. Um, you know, they've been working. It's a long, hard road, especially, like, in the South. I don't understand why, like, basically all of the poorer states haven't seen, like, the tax revenues that, like, Colorado, California, Oregon, Washington are, like, raking in. Because they're making so much tax money. It's ridiculous. Um, I... I I don't know why they can't set their stupid drugs are bad MK uh, aside and just you know be like, hey, you know now now Kentucky really is the bluegrass state. Come smoke up here, you know. Yeah, true that. Then, then once they have actual tax re- tax revenue, they have to fix roads and do social programs. And really, what it comes down to is a lot of those states that are really resisting legalization or wanting to keep it illegal for use as a tool against minorities. Yeah. Graf called me out, out, but yeah, that's why. It's so they can pull people over and throw them in jail. I mean, even, even like, I don't think it'll, it'll like result in a doxing or anything, but like even my brother got a possession ticket in Fayetteville, which was a decriminalized city, supposedly. Um, why? Because my, my my brother doesn't look like me. He's got a big old curly fro. He just has kind of that curly Sicilian hair going on. And he was walking down the street one night, walking home from the bar, and you know who they thought they were pulling over. Um, but they went ahead and committed to it once they actually got him pulled over and gave him a ticket for possession. It was dumb as shit. Um I think he actually ended up getting it dismissed. Um, but, uh, yeah, they just use it as a harassment tool. It's fucked up, and it's no good. Um, Colorado, Denver, um, I know City of Denver is working to basically uh, void convictions um, for anybody that got busted after, like, 2001, 2002, somewhere in that range. Um, so, uh you know, baby steps. Um, obviously, the ideal case would be some sort of reparations towards those people that had their careers ruined or their job prospects ruined, stuff like that. Even just like like voiding their conviction and making their record clean do- doesn't kind of negate the fact that hey, they could have made maybe a hundred thousand dollars more money over the past fifteen years if they wouldn't have had that on their record. Um, yeah. I like I remember them uh I remember my dad specifically who is a terrible was a uh terrible horrible suburban racist um getting pissed off as if though he he had some stake in the whole uh crack versus cocaine thing um because they reduced some of the sentencing guidelines and he was pitching a fit as if like bringing the the you know, they always talked about the disparity, which like it used to be like 27 to 1. Like, you get 27 years in jail for having crack rocks versus one year for the same weight in powder coke. And they knocked it down to like 8 to 1 or something. Still horrible injustice and just bad shit. And he was mad about this. And I was like, Graf knows why, because he had the Rush Limbaugh brain worms. And it was, it was just he was poisoned and like that's what he was told by radio man that that like yelled and rattled papers um that's really cool Dilla. yeah um i know uh california and uh colorado um i think vegas is also working to kind of normalize things um but yeah like we need to we need to at least stop the bleeding and all that um at this point cuz as a person that um, used to work in a in a uh, ca- uh, cannabis industry startup, um, there is a certain class of people that are making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year off of weed now here in the fine state of Colorado. And the only reason that they touch it now is because it's legal. They have no ideological like basis for why they love it. it but it's a specific class of white people. It's the, oh, God, I don't want to get in trouble. Um, I mean, like, I I basically worked for a company that was run by, I want to speak to your manager moms. Um, and uh, they, 
you know, they were not at all in this industry until it got legalized here. And then as soon as they got legalized here, um, they were all over it. They're like, oh, let's let's jump in. Let's be one of the first companies that has this cannabis SaaS platform. We're gonna we're gonna get everybody running high tech and all this stuff. We're gonna get everybody synced up. We're gonna have reports. We're gonna have this, that, and the other. And um, I remember one meeting where I um, this was before. Um, like city of Denver was talking about voiding convictions and stuff like that. But the concept of some sort of reparative, um, policy was starting to come up in some areas. And I went to them, the two owners of this company and said, what do you guys think about do donating 0.1% of our profits, not revenue, but profits towards helping this movement to get people with unjust convictions voided and they looked at me like i had a third arm growing out of my head um holy shit tap that's good <laughs> anyways um yeah i don't want to rant too deep on all that industry but some of you know my my history in that field um i'm glad that i don't work in weed anymore um it it was probably a long-term mistake but s things were a little bit different when i took that job and so on um i don't even know what these geezers are talking about i'm just kind of bullshitting it hi nargle i've got a nargle cat stirring me down i think it's time for the evening c-a-n The old can open. Grab that can and open it. <laughs> we'll go ahead and wrap it up at the uh, middle of the hour. What? Okay. Y you guys help me out. What is the bottom of the hour and what is the top of the hour? Is it like baseball? I, I don't know what the terminology is in baseball either. But top of the hour is always minute zero, right? Is the bottom of the hour minute 30? I don't know. <sighs> That's horrible. Does it go by a watch? Okay. Top of the hour is 20? What? No, the display just goes off. I would think that the top of the hour is zero minutes and then the bottom would be 30. Makes sense. I don't know. It will receive, but the display just goes out. Yeah, it's weird. So I guess you can use. It seems like there's a there's a few different concepts or or a few different ideas here. Yeah, so the bottom of the hour is when the hour is running out, maybe. Which is contrary to what I'm thinking, but I could see where the bottom of the hour is like, we're, we're running out of time, we're getting to the bottom of the program hour, if you're talking about a radio program and stuff like that. And then the top of the hour is obviously fresh hour. I, I think everybody agrees with the top of the hour. Weird. I gotta think about this stuff because I'm basically running a radio program now, right? Except I'm also running a TV talk show. No, I didn't, Catfire. That sounds interesting. No, that's cool. I've been, uh, I've been trying to do a little bit of research. I got a buddy of mine um, and a follower here in this fine channel. I'm not sure if he's still in right now, but uh, he's a he uh, plays with a radio station a little bit now and then, and I did one semester of the college station when I was in school, like for, like 48,000 years ago, and I had a bunch of fun, but um, I've always loved talk radio. I've always loved these kind of programs where I just kind of get on and run it, so I'm trying to learn um, kind of how to structure things a little bit so that they're engaging. I don't go on too long, stuff like that, um, keep topics switched up, but keep people's attention and all that. So I've been doing a lot of reading on stuff like that and trying to figure out how things go um, and like 
what good program flow is. Um, obviously, some of it's freeform, like when I've got the soldering iron out. Speaking of which, I should turn it off. Um, you know, and I'm like deep in a project, but when I'm like like trying to run an hour like this, um, it might be good to kind of you know figure out like what I'm doing and how to pace things. Um, so we'll just get better over time. Um, those of you that have been with me from the start um, think you can agree that I've already gotten a lot better at this since uh, episode one. By the way, this is episode 14 of the Maddie Zedcast. We've been going for over seven weeks now, um, which is pretty spectacular, and I'm having so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Also, also, um, big milestone here. Today, due to some of my adoring uh, fans and followers' uh, uh, subscriptions, by the way, if you uh, have Amazon Prime and you're not subscribed to anybody on Twitch... Be aware that you can um, subscribe to the the Matty Z cast with your Twitch Prime because you get one free subscription. You can give any streamer out there four dollars and ninety five cents a month um, straight out of Jeff Bezos's pocket. If you don't spend it, it's wasted and it goes to that bald weirdo's bank account. Um, so if you have Amazon Prime and you are not subscribed to any Twitch streams. Please subscribe to mine, and it goes to the Maddie Zedcast, and we're going to turn it into fun electronics to buy, stuff like that. Woo! Hell yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe to me with uh, Twitch Prime if you're not subscribed to any other streamers. And uh, 100% of all the money that I make off of this, because this is just me turning the cameras on when I do the shit that I would every night at this ham radio bench, um, goes back into the stream, we'll buy gadgets, we'll buy kits, we've got radios to give away, we've got all sorts of stuff on deck for this spring and summer, um, so uh, definitely keep in mind that um, I'm not trying to make money off this, I'm trying to turn this into a thing, um, and every sub, every like bit helps um seriously um but uh on that circling back to where i start started ranting um is i finally hit 100 dollars of subs and tips in my twitch account and for those of you that aren't uh, streamers um that means that i actually get a direct deposit in my checking account um any month in which you have 100 dollars uh, or more of unpaid funds uh, accrued um they put that shit in your bank account um, so I got some money coming up to me in the next few days, um, and I'm going to buy some cool stuff for the stream. So super excited about that. Please keep it coming. I really do sincerely appreciate it. Um, but, but even if nobody gave a single penny, I'd still be doing this three nights a week um, for sure. Um, so, yeah, super excited about that. I, I obviously check my page obsessively, and I saw it today. I was like $102.47 unpaid revenue, and I was like, yes bring on the money train um so uh yeah like i said it's just a labor of love i'd be doing this anyways but all that money that people are tossing towards me it goes right back in and uh i think we got a couple of cool kits that we're gonna buy and build here and then uh for, for, for those of you that were here at the very beginning this is like one of the very first episodes we did um the old school uh texan 2p3 um sits here i still gotta glue that on but uh we built this from parts don't get too many am stations here but so yeah we we built that little transistor radio here live on the stream um i'm gonna keep that because it is it means a lot to me because that was the first real project here, but we're going to have some more kits like that going on. Um, and from here on out, any stuff th that I build are going to be given away to followers, um, and I'll even pay shipping for you, so it won't cost you a dime. Um, so everybody make sure to follow and stuff like that because um, it's very important. Um, definitely motivates me. Um, yeah, I love it so much. And I've gotten like random comments from people that have gone through my like archive streams like dude the little 2p3 is dope it's so good 
Um, so yeah, I love it. And we're going to keep building more cool kits and stuff like that. Um, so definitely know that your money, um, is going to cool gizmos and gadgets and, uh, they're going to get sent right back out to y'all. Um, so I guess that's probably going to be about wrapping it up. The radio is kind of crapping out at this point. Um, we had a really good session, um, had fun, uh, playing around with the rotator box. We're like 80% of the way towards having that satellite station on the air. Um, all I really have to do is, uh, get my, uh, get my, uh, crazy antenna set up here. Um, get this up in the air and, uh, get it spinning around and tracking satellites. And then that's it. I mean, I can operate like one of the big goals of this is once this particular ham radio comes out in May, um, it's called the ICOM 9700. That's going to be able to work satellites really well. However, between this radio and that radio, I can still get on. So as soon as this is up in the air and spinning around and tracking satellites, we're going to be talking to people by bouncing signals off little boxes in space. Um, and it's going to be really exciting and really fun. And I'm super looking forward to it. Um, so, <laughs> it could be, um, but yeah, these, uh, these are my satellite antennas that I've been building up. So this spins, um, that's a dowel and these spin up and down on that. So these track the satellite in the elevation. And then this whole thing is going to spin on heading. And so my tracking program is going to actually keep these, um, like synced up and aimed at a satellite. Woo! Thank you. Hell yes. Bring it on. <laughs> but yeah, this also could be some sort of kebab type thing, I suppose. Um, but yeah, we have two different radio antennas here. And I've been working hard to get this. That's the up in the air end of the satellite station. And then I've been you know, you know, you know, building up all the boxes in here and then we're going to link those up and basically I'll have a robot that looks at satellites. Um, I am also going to install one thing that I have on order is a, uh, uh, 1080p outdoor security camera. Um, we're going to mount this right about here. And so we're going to have a live stream here on the screen when we are operating the satellites. Um, that's going to look at the exact part of the sky and you're going to be able to watch these these um, crazy antennas tilt and pan and all that stuff in real time as we chase things. You can't see the satellite, but it'll sure as shit to, like, tell you what part of the sky we're actually looking at. Um, so that's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Um, so I'm really excited about this project. Um, Y'all have been a great motivator towards getting me off of my butt and actually doing this because I've talked about doing this for years and years. And I was like, I've got a project now. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're working on for the next couple months. I might have this thing in the air as soon as next week, though. Um, so let's see um, if that camera shows up and I can solder up some more of those coax connectors. We should be on the air pre pretty freaking quick. Um, but uh, until then, let's call it good. Um, for those of you new to the stream, we go on uh, live Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. Tuesday and Thursday, we're on at 7 p.m. Mountain. That's 0100 UTC. And if you don't know how to convert UTC to local, learn, because in the world of ham radio, you got to know. And then on Saturdays, we usually do 3 p.m. to about 6 p.m., um, so a little bit earlier. Um, and that's going to be um, 9 p.m. or 2100 UTC. Um, so everybody have a great night. Um, Hey, Trash Baby, good to see you. Hell yes. Appreciate everybody dropping in and saying hello. Um, we're going to catch you all in about 45 and a half hours. And uh, until then, everybody stay real and uh, keep the iron hot. And uh, we'll see you in the world of hot solder in just a couple days. I'm Matty Z with the Matty Zedcast. Everybody have a great night and good evening.
Thank <laughs> you. 